Hey, what is up, Salt Strong family? This is Pat Ogletree, and in this video, I want to answer a question that we're getting in the community that's referring to land-based anglers, and we're getting a lot of questions about how to find places to fish if you don't have a boat or a kayak and you want to fish from land, and I want to give you a couple of tips on places where you can find some places to fish, and it can be productive. You know, It's no different than if you have a, a boat or a kayak. You just have to follow the trends and pick out the right places. So I'm going to show you a couple of little tools that I use whenever I'm traveling around and I'm looking for a place to fish from land. First place we're going to do is uh, let's go to the Smart Fishing Spots app and I'm going to click on this little icon down here, the settings. I'm going to pull up our layers map and then I'm going to click on boat ramps. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up any boat ramps that are in the area. Now the reason why I'm bringing up boat ramps is you know, I understand that we don't have, you know, a boat, but a lot of these boat ramps give us accessibility to water that we wouldn't have because of development. So I'm looking at Florida right here and you know, it happens everywhere in Texas. It happens in North Carolina where there's just a lot of development and places that we want to fish at, but these boat ramps allow us to be able to get in there and some of them are a lot better than others. So let's say, uh, let's zoom into this one right here. Uh, so we got uh, orange, orange beach boat ramp and it looks like we have have accessibility around this point right here uh, and that looks like a good spot now of course you have to go to these places and kind of check them out to make sure that you can fish from them but a satellite image does give you a good place to start so let's go ahead and uh, pull back out and kind of look at the uh, the area where it's at so where you'd fish something like this is it's really uh, adjacent to an inlet right there so that's going to be a good time you know in the summertime and the heat of the heat of the year uh, that you're gonna get a lot of this cold water that's gonna flow in and out of there so that be a great type of uh, ramp to fish there but let's say you've got uh, let's look at this one over here on the back side I did see one back here there we go uh, there's a boat ramp right here and uh, if you notice uh, I don't know if this is fishable or not again this is something that you would have to assess when you get there but uh, if you notice its location it's right back here uh, it's a little bit further away from that inlet it's in some darker shallower water uh, this would be a good wintertime spot if you can get in there and uh, definitely it looks like a place that would uh, hold some redfish and flounder some trout uh, looks like a great little spot right there but again uh, something that you would have to assess to see what the fishability is but uh, this is a tool to find some of those places uh, so let's zoom back out and then I'm going to scoot on over and check um, check this little place out. I've been here before, a uh, little lagoon. And another thing that these boat ramps can do also is, you know, I know we're, we're talking about land-based anglers, but part of land-based anglers is also wading. And these boat ramps can give you access to the water to start wading. You know, uh, again, you need to make sure that the, the bottom is good for wading and it's safe and, you know, the currents aren't bad through there. So we, we, we have to evaluate that, but these places are, are definitely good starting points to get that, to get that access to that water that we're looking for. Uh, so here's um, Moe's Landing Park. I've been around this area. Uh, it's definitely a uh, shallow uh, shoreline around here. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard bottom. I, I happen to know this because I've fished this before. So using this tool and using the boat ramps locator that's in the Smart Fishing Spots app uh, will help you get some more access. Now, here's another tool that I like to use. If we notice, we're going to go ahead and uh, pull out a little bit. And if we notice, there's only that one boat ramp in the area. So I like to use another app that's called Called paddling.com and here is what this looks like you know I'll pull it up and then I can click on the map and it actually here's that ramp right there this is that one boat ramp but being a kayak you're gonna have accessibility to the water elsewhere that you don't normally have with a boat so uh, being a kayak website uh, there's a couple different spots right here that you would be able to access as a land-based angler so you can go in there and check that out and then what you can do is you can kind of kind of get an idea of where these are right here and then you can switch back to the um, to the satellite image and zoom in and this is an inlet right here so this is where that one kayak spot would be again this would be an area that you would want to fish during you know the peak uh, the heat of the moment the the heat of the year I should say and you'll get a lot of flow in and out from the ocean now say this one that was over here it happens to be called um, Jeff friend trail this is the other kayak spot if you notice that this area it's further back from that inlet 
So we've got a lot of shallow water here and this is going to heat up a little bit. And we also got some uh, drop offs right there. So uh, you've got uh, the makings of a really good fall and winter spot right here. Um, again, you can fish this from shore. You can go out and wade and uh, work this whole area. And, and that's kind of what we need to look at when we're looking at spots. Uh, there are piers out there that work good. You can you can fish piers, but you know how, how that can be. Piers can get crowded uh, during certain times of the year, especially if there's a, you know, the word gets out that, uh, you know, the, the um, kingfish are running or there's a certain species that are running. Uh, the, the, the piers can get really, really crowded. Now, you shouldn't not go to them, but, you know, you kind of know what you're getting into when you're getting there. And there's also jetties that you can do, but the problem with jetties, if they don't have a, you know, a nice walkway built on them, uh, they can be treacherous. And, you know, you get a lot of, uh, you know, the high winds and the waves and uh, it can get dangerous, but those are other options. Before I tell you the next tip, I want to let you know about a new app that came out called Smart Fishing Spots. People are using this to catch more fish in less time than ever before. You can use this tool to plan either an inshore or an offshore fishing trip. We have spots already picked out that you can go right to based on feeding activity and what type of fish that are there so you can possibly catch the fish of a lifetime. With this tool, you can see right through the water all the way to the bottom and use this information to make sure you're in the correct position to catch the fish that you're after. We also have high-res satellite imagery and nautical navigation maps to guide you on the way. We have added layers that let you know where the oyster bars and the seagrass is to find the fish even faster. There's very accurate weather software that not only lets you know about temperature and wind, it also has radar to help keep you safe on the water, along with many other features. For more information, click on the link down below. Now on to the final tip. So another thing that you can do to find some land-based spots is take a look at the map and try to find some roads that run right along the water. And a lot of those places will have pull-offs that you can pull over and check it out. Uh, this is Sabine Lake in the, at the border of Texas and Louisiana. And there's a road that runs right along it right here called Levee Road. And the cool thing about this one is it's a very long road and this is a, this is a rather large lake. And uh, the fishing definitely changes throughout the seasons where you want to fish. Some parts of the year, they're going to be down here in the south end and other parts are going to be you know further up north depending on where the shrimp run is and there's there's different trends in this lake but the cool thing about this road is you can start here at the bottom right here and drive along this shoreline and you're looking for bait fish activity bird feeding activity uh, physically seeing fish feeding and you can just drive along here and do that same thing and when you find something that looks good uh, you can pull over and stop and find a place to fish uh, so so using a map using a road map and seeing anything that runs along the water is a good place to start. Now, again, this is another one of the situations where you have to evaluate whether you're allowed to fish there or not, uh, but definitely a good spot, you know, a good place to look is just on, uh, you know, on the Google Earth images. And I got another one that I want to show you that uh, is over here in my home waters of Florida. And this is a really good place that I used to go to whenever the wind was up and I don't want to launch the kayak. And that was over here in Merritt Island. So what we have here is we've got the the main road right here and these causeways you can pull off and fish off of too uh, definitely a popular thing to do but we also have these berm roads and this is anywhere that they're trying to do type of um, water mitigation where they want to you know move water from the others they'll build levees and some of these levees you have access to and that's exactly what these roads are right here these are completely drivable uh, they've got spots where you can stop and fish at and those are spots that you can actually stop and get in the water too so there's some accessibility there so you do have to do a little bit of um, you know a little bit of sleuthing here to find some of these spots but there are other spots out there besides you know going to your standard fishing pier so let's look at your boat docks let's look at your kayak launching points and uh, start looking on the on the map and just follow roads that are near bodies of water that you want to fish and you could either go on a satellite you know Google Earth and actually zoom down to that level and see if there's anything that you can pull over or just go there and drive by and see what it looks like that sometimes is the best thing Thing. You can get a uh, an assessment of the land and see if it looks like a place that can hold fish, if there's some feeding activity, if there's bird activity or any wildlife there. Uh, it's a good idea to check it out. So I hope this helps you out. And if you've got any questions or comments, put those down below. And as always, uh, if you've got any information that can help some people out, uh, put that down there and see if you can uh, help some people find some land-based spots. And until next time, I'll see you in the next fish finding lesson. And I hope you can get on the water soon. Have a great day. Bye.
And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we are the best online fishing club in America, where we guarantee that you'll catch more fish in less time while saving money on all the tackle that you need to be successful, and you'll make friends fast or it's free. For more information, go to saltstrong.com. And until then, we hope to see you in the insider community soon. Have a great day and thanks for watching.